Welcome to the Security Tube Linux Assembly Expert course and certification. Now in this video, we will look at how to write custom encoders. And I'll take up a very simple example, which I call the NOT encoder. So what is the NOT encoder? Well, it will take every byte of your shell code and then apply the NOT operation to it to transform it. Now the decoder stub would again have to apply the NOT operation to the encoded shell code and eventually get back the original shell code after which it passes control to it. Now let's jump right in and take up an example. So in this case, what we are going to do is we will use the exec VE stack shell code, which we had generated before. If you don't have this, please refer to previous videos. Now we could get the shell code out. Copy it out and just quickly test it once just so we are sure. No ambiguity. And the shell code works perfectly and the size is 32 bytes. Now I've written a very simple Python script uh, which can take in the shell code as input and apply the NOT operation to every byte to get the NOT encoded shell code, right? So here is the operation which we've applied. So let me run the script and we get the NOT encoded shell code here, which we can copy out. Now let's write our not decoder. So we could go ahead and copy this out into a template. So we can copy this out to not encoder dot nasm and open up not encoder. Let's remove all of this data from in here, which we do not require. Right. First is let us paste our shell code. So encoded shell code. Define byte. Let's paste this in here first. Great. Now, in this case, rather than using the jump call pop technique, I am actually going to use the RIP relative addressing technique. So if you remember the template which we used for it, let's issue a jump here to the real start, which we will define in here, real start. And we can very easily get the address of the encoded shell code right now. Uh, let's say we want to store it inside RSI and just by doing a rel encoded shell code. Fantastic. Now let's write our decoder. We remember the size of the shell code is 32 bytes. I'm going to use a ZOR RCX RCX followed by an add CL32. And then finally we have the actual decode code where we are going to loop through all of these bytes and do not on a per byte basis. So here it is not byte RSI increment RSI then loop over decode. Now finally once all the shell code has been decoded let's issue a jump to our decoded shell code which will be exactly in the same location as the encoded shell code label. Right? Fantastic. 
So let me quickly check the program. So we get the address of the encoded shell code. Uh, we set up the counter with the value 32 in it. And then we run a loop and not the appropriate byte. Looks okay to me. Let's use NASM. Net encoder.nasm. Create the object file. Let's get the shell code. So there do not seem to be any null bytes. Let's copy it out paste it inside our shell code tester. Let's compile and run it. There we go. 32 bloated up into 56. It's almost uh, 42, 52, 24 bytes extra, uh, but our not decoder work just fine and we are able to get our shell, right? Fantastic. So this is an example of how you can create your own custom encoders and write decoder stuffs from them. Now in the next video, we will analyze this shell code in GDB and look at how the whole thing works at a micro level. So that's all I had in mind for this video. If you're enjoying your time here at Pentester Academy, then please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.